How many chroma keys can you use on the ATEM Mini Extreme? Not one, not two, not three, but four. And why do you need four chroma keys? Stay tuned for today's video. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Steph here. Welcome to episode three from the A10 Mini Basic Series. In today's episode, I will talk about what's a chroma key, how to use the chroma key, and how to use the A10 Mini Extreme's new four chroma key feature. Hmm, so many keys and a ridiculous background to top it up. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so first of all, what is a chroma key, also known as an upstream key on your A10 Mini? Before I jump into what's a chroma key, let me first introduce you to what is a green screen. I'm sure most of you have heard of or used a green screen before, and what you see behind me is a green screen. Basically, this term refers to the colored background you want to make transparent and remove from your shot. Like this, this. This is usually a single colored backdrop which can be any color, but it's usually bright green because it is the color furthest away from human skin tones. Blue screens were frequently used in the early days with film and might still be used in certain cases. For example, if the actor or actress has to wear green. So I guess for Marvel movies, they can't use the green screen on the Hulk, right? So chroma keying goes hand in hand with the usage of a green screen. It is the technique of layering or compositing two images based on color hues. Every color has a chroma range, hence that's where the terminology comes about. The process of removing the green screen background in post-production using video editing software and when the green screen background has been keyed out, it will be fully transparent then you can fill in that transparent area with a different image or video. Now that we have a basic understanding of a green screen and a chroma key, let's take a look at how the A10 Mini Extreme allows us to use this in our live productions. So in this section where I talk about one chroma key, I have this basic setup. Source 1 is connected to one of my cameras, and Source 4 is connected to my laptop, which I am displaying an image. Open up your ATEM software control panel and go to Switcher, Palettes, Upstream Key 1, and Chroma. Under Fill Source, select Camera 1. The Chroma sample here is default to be green. However, to be safe, you may want to let the ATEM know which green you are using for your background. Click on the bullet button here to toggle something like an eyedropper too. As you move the little square around here, you can see that there is also a little cursor moving on the preview screen, which is set to camera 1. This tells the ATEM Mini exactly which color you want the ATEM to know as the key source. Once you're done, click on the bullet button again. So now we are ready to do our chroma keying. As you can see, Source 4 is selected as our background and Source 1 is ready to chroma. You can either click on the On Air button here in the ATEM software control panel or press Key 1 on the ATEM Mini's physical button. There you have the fill source of Camera 1 on the background of Source 4 where the green is already keyed out. Easy and amazing, right? This chroma key works for both the Mini Pro and the Extreme model. Green screen technology has been around for years, but ever since COVID, a lot of companies, especially here in Singapore, are turning to green screen productions for their live streaming needs, connecting to their colleagues from all over the world. By the way, to sidetrack a little, do any one of you watch football? I just realized to my horror that a match of the day production team is actually in a green screen studio. So what we see on TV versus what is actually on site. Now I'll talk about the exciting new feature of the A10 Mini Extreme. Remember I just talked about using one chroma key earlier to build a virtual set? The A10 Mini Extreme models include four 
upstream independent chroma keys and this allows you to build up to four virtual sets. As I've spoken earlier in the video, I've taught you how to use one chroma key for one virtual set, right? But now we can build up to four virtual sets. As you can see from the older Mini Pro models, there's only one upstream key here. However, for the extreme model, there are four upstream keys here. Setting up the other keys for other virtual sets are simply the same as I have mentioned previously, so you should have no problems with that. So for myself, I have personally used three of these chroma keys simultaneously in a few of my previous corporate live stream jobs. And now I will share with you how this exactly works. So typically, I have a host or MC talking in front of a green screen. So the live stream starts with the host addressing the online audience with the relevant backdrop of the event. Say for example, it's a town hall event or an awards ceremony. Then there will be guest speakers. So usually I set up two more virtual sets for two guest speakers nearby so that they can get ready and be prepared to talk when they go live. If there's only one other virtual set, they may have to scramble to go off and the next speaker will come on and you know, it's not that smooth, right? Instant switching makes online viewing smooth and professional. So how you set up your own virtual sets is limited to your creativity and of course, most importantly, the client's requirements. With up to 4 chroma keyers, the possibilities are endless. Most importantly, after watching today's video, you have a clear picture of how the chroma key works on the A10 Mini Extreme. Then you will be able to conceptualize and build your own virtual production green screen sets. So there you have it, a simple A10 Mini Basics video to show you how to use the chroma key function on the A10 Mini Extreme for your live productions. And of course, the ability to maximize the use of four chroma keys. I've always said that only by understanding and mastering the basic of how the A10 Mini works, you'll be able to create more amazing effects and fully optimize and harness the power of the Extreme. And also be able to troubleshoot any problems that crop up during your live stream because you know all the basics. After watching today's video, I hope you guys can take what resonates and leave what doesn't behind. At the end of the day, I just hope that you learned something, anything, from today's video. I hope you found the video today useful and if you like more of such videos, let me know in the comments below what you would like to see in the future. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like. That would mean so much to me. And as always, I'm Steph. If you have any questions, please let me know.